Mr. Roth. Um, this is one I know you get asked a lot, but I think people are still curious about it. Um, how does the audience differ from a classical music production when working with a video game concert? Like, how does the um, how does the how audience does the audience? Yeah, um, yeah. I, I've been asked this. There's several ways to answer it. To to the lay person, you know, when you talk to a classical, uh, a typical quintessential classical um, uh, audience member. Um, they have no concept. What's it like to go to a video game concert, you know, with with symphony symphony orchestra? Um, so I have to describe it to them in terms that they'll understand. Mm -hmm. And the way I might describe it to the person that's not a video game player but just needs to know what what is the concert about, I would describe it as um, what is the music going to sound like? The music will be uh, sweeping movie scoreish type of writing just as a very generic kind of description of what they're going to hear. But what's interesting about this audience, to me, is when you go to a classical concert, um, you have, first of all, the average age is maybe 60, 70 years old in general. There are, yes, we have new, some new audience that's interested, whether it be contemporary or, or traditional classical repertoire. But we do, we do have a problem here in the United States and around the world of orchestras, uh, the traditional audience for orchestras dying away, and the and therefore remember in the United States we don't support the arts. I hate to say, but but our government does not fund arts performances or arts education and music education. So therefore, we have whole generations growing up without any exposure to what is a symphony, what is an orchestra, what is a violin, what's an oboe, what, what you know who's Beethoven. Um, uh, this, people are growing up not knowing this. So I'm not saying that it's critical to your life, but it's, it's an important part of the culture that we're losing. So the audience comparison is interesting because classical audience is growing up with a great restraint. And they will come in the, almost like a museum situation where they will sit quietly, polite applause, and very, try to be very quiet uh, during the polite applause, almost never standing ovations or, or any cheering or, or things like that. That would almost never happen. It does occasionally, but very rarely. Um, now a pop or rock audience, of course, will be in the middle of the concert walking out to buy a beer, you know, <laughs> or a hot dog, or, or they'll be standing up in the aisles dancing or singing along with their fam favorite artist or some of the lyrics of the songs, which is great also, but it's quite different from a classical audience that way, whether it's opera or whatever. Our video game audience, and I've found this to be true everywhere in the world, actually, which is interesting, very consistent. First of all, you can hear a pin drop during the performance. Very quiet. Everyone is sitting on the edge of their seats and they really want to hear the music. They're, it's really about listening to the live performance, carefully. They, they don't want to step on anything. As a matter of fact, I get a lot of emails from fans lambasting other fans for talking or clapping or shouting during our performance. Which of course I don't mind, but, but you know, they, oh, they ruined, they ruined you know, the beginning of such and such because somebody cheered, you know. They really are serious listeners. And they're very educated listeners. They've listened to, my theory is that they've listened to these recordings for hundreds and thousands of hours in many cases. <laughs> but, well, but, I mean, and because of that, but here's the interesting thing. You've listened to those recordings at the same tempo, beautiful recordings, but the same tempo, meaning over and over again, that same recording, and the same compression. I'm talking about what we have to do to squeeze the dynamics of the track so that when you're playing your, your PlayStation or whatever you might be using, you don't have to reach for the volume all the time. It doesn't get too loud or too soft. Everything is what we call squashed or compressed. So mezzo, mezzo, right? We, what we would call mezzo forte, medium, all the time. Not too soft, not too loud. You're listening to that all the time. Now you come to a concert with 70 performers on stage, 70 piece orchestra or 80 piece symphony orchestra, and a 40 voice or 50 voice choir. So you have 125, 150 performers on stage with soloists and you hear a triple piano played by that entire group that'll make the hair stand up, you know, on your, just, it's just air moving. 
from 150 performers, and it's really a, it's a thing to behold if you've never heard that. You know, the, that experience of just air moving. I think of uh, opening bombing mission, the very opening of that. You know, just a very eerie, quiet opening. Or the reverse of that, which is triple forte crashing arrivals with 150 people just giving all that they can. And I don't think that you get that playing the video game as much as you get live on stage. And that's, so what I've answered <laughs> in a long way, I'm sorry, is why video game fans, I think, enjoy these concerts. Because they're finally seeing it uncompressed the way the composer wanted it. Full dynamic range, live, and the music can breathe and move a little bit, right? If we get excited, we might take it two beats per minute faster because we're excited as performers. Or if we really are coming to a crashing cadence moment in the music, a very important moment, we'll stretch a little bit. This is not something that you're getting in the video game. You're seeing the same tempo over and over again, same recording. So I love that you're able to bring that to life in these concerts. So I don't know if I've answered what you, <laughs> hopefully I have, but, but uh, the answers are great, absolutely great to this. So. So, uh, Uematsu san, uh, where do you actually find inspiration for a lot of your pieces? を意識して曲を作るっていうことはないわけですよ。でも何だろうね。例えば僕はもう今あんまり世の中で流行ってる新しい音楽とか、僕は聞く時間がないんで聞いてないんですよ。だから今の最近の流行には多分影響は受けて